Hi, and welcome to this installment of Worldwide Wide-Eyed. I'm Scott Bergstein. Along with my wife, Jessica Kaup, I travel the world looking for inspiration, and I find it everywhere we go. We share our adventures through Jessica's photographs and my words. Welcome to our world. Today, our journey takes us to Australia, specifically to the state of South Australia, which is in the south of Australia. <laughs> we went there to see how the region produces some of the best wines in the world. We took on the task of tasting our way through this renowned wine region. And to help us share our experience with you, we have a special guest. I'm joined today by Rob Gilliland. Say good day, Rob. Good day. I love hearing a real Aussie say good day. And Rob is a real Aussie. He also happens to be from Adelaide in South Australia, which is in... <laughs> Not only is Rob an Aussie from Adelaide, but he also happens to be a restaurateur. And as owner of Drift Dining, one of Kuala Lumpur's best eateries, Rob is the perfect guy to talk to about the wines of that region. Most importantly, Rob was actually willing to do this. So Rob, Jessica and I recently traveled to the Barossa Valley and the McLaren Vale, and we found the wines there to be particularly non-sucky. <laughs> there was no suckiness whatsoever in the wines. Tell us what it is about South Australia that allows them to, to produce these wonderful wines. Look, South Australia is a, a, it's an incredible place, an incredibly important place in the wine industry in Australia. Uh, it produces about 55% of all wine that comes out of Australia. Uh, but on top of that, and, 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 it, and it's something they're trying to move away from, which is this mass image, but uh, on top of that, they have some of the, the most incredible uh, you know, premium wine growing regions in the world. And a lot of that has to do with um, uh, some of the vines that they have there. Uh, most of the world was decimated by, um, by the phylloxera, which wiped out all of Europe's vines, it wiped out a lot of Australia's vines. But what, it, what it means is that um, Australia, and specifically South Australia, has a remarkable amount of um, old vine um, grapes. And so these grapes, uh, sorry, these vines that were, were planted back in the 1800s, and there's nowhere else in the world where you can find this. And so what it does is it gives these Shirazes and, and, and wines this incredible intensity. Um, on top of that, when you, you know, when you look at climate and, and location, you've got uh, the Barossa Valley, so Adelaide, Adelaide down south in South Australia, as you know. Um, if you go 45 minutes north and, and just through the Adelaide Hills, you hit McLaren uh, sorry, Barossa, and it's this beautiful kind of flat, um, a space with just gentle sort of rolling slopes and you get these incredibly hot summers um, and beautiful sort of four seasons which is what grapes need to, to produce and then if you go over the hill a bit and come down to the coastal region of uh, McLaren Vale um, the region itself is a little bit cooler so it creates wines with a little bit more elegance but you still get that beautiful sort of robust character that you find um, that really does characterize particularly um, South Australian Shiraz. Well, you know, one of the things that uh, is stunning as you go through the Barossa Valley and McLaren Vale is to see the iconic names of producers uh, of, of these um, world-renowned wines. Uh, Molly Duker, Peter Lehman, Penfolds, uh, Darenberg, and in my opinion, the best of them all, Yellowtail. I mean, it's, it's, it's just uh, hard to, uh, to not uh, develop a, a watering mouth as you drive through there. So, um, now Drift has made a, a significant contribution to, to the um, South Australian wine profile here in Kuala Lumpur. Tell us about how you go about uh, selecting your wines from South Australia and what you'd like people to take from those. Mm. Look, I, I think for me, you know, wine is a, wine is an, a, a, it's a time, it's a place, it's an experience. And, you know, when you think about uh, things like music or art, uh, uh, so much of it has to do with the story behind it. You know, there, there's a quality level that, that must be a baseline. 
and you know Australian winemakers are some of the best in the world and there's you know there's no doubt about that our, you know Roseworthy and our uh, um, educational um, programs are, are you know pretty much second to none in the world so quality wise that there's no doubt but for me um, as a restaurateur it's important that the wines we select represent a time and a place and they, they're on there for a reason there's no point looking at a wine list and seeing every single you know seeing a thousand bottles from the same place at the same price in the same region the same wine what's the point you, you know there's no choice there so what we aim to do is we look for um, wines that are very specific to their their place and their region and really show the expression of, of where they're from and why so that when you come or you know when people come to the restaurant uh, they have the opportunity to to experience something they perhaps wouldn't do at home or otherwise so so every wine has a story what what's the story of this white wine you've so, poured so um, the first one we've got here uh, is, uh, uh, is is produced by Kaiser uh, the Kaisers moved to South Australia in uh, eight, in 1856 uh, and from Germany as so many people um, did in that you know sort of just uh, Adelaide Hills region. Uh, there's, you know, there's quite a German settlement there, um, and uh, and so basically they they planted they planted grapes, which were then over the years the family sort of lost the vineyards and so on and so forth. Until about 15, 16 years ago, um, uh, Reed Boswood put together a, um, was tasting the wines and, and put together the original parcel of the Kaisler Holdings. And these are some of the oldest vines you'll find. I mean, uh, one of their Shirazes, uh, the vine was planted in uh, 1863, uh, and they've got a lot of material, a lot of vines out of 1899. So the first wine we're having um, is from the Kaisler uh, Vineyards in the Brossum, uh, and we're gonna, we're gonna have the old vine Semion. So Semion's are uh, sometimes a bit out of, out of um, Popularity, it's you know, it's not Chardonnay, it's not a Sauvignon Blanc, people don't really know where it sits, but it's you know, it's a fantastic variety. You get this beautiful acidity, beautiful linear acidity to it, um, it's got uh, great citrus characteristics, and and the way uh, they make it in uh, uh, Atta you get this lovely sort of texture to it as well. So, I, I mean, honestly, as an aperitif or as a uh, you know, as a starting wine, especially with fish and seafood and oysters. These are just absolutely fantastic. Well, let's try it. Cheers. Cheers. You know, I'm getting some pineapple and, and some pear, um, and then uh, mid palate, the kind of wet tree bark with some <laughs> sprinkles of white pepper and those little round things, uh, capers. Very, very nice wine. Yeah, look, I, I th yeah, I think that's uh, interesting. <laughs> I think it's, it's good that you are beginning to find some points of differences in wine. Great. So that's, that, that's wonderful. What about this, uh, this red one? So, Shiraz is what South Australia is really known for. If you had to say something is, is you know, a variety is what Australia has made its own in its no, own no, way. No, you say Shiraz, we say Shiraz. But, yeah. That's, you don't know how to say it right, but it's not your fault. Um, we can find middle ground on. Uh, so, the Shiraz is definitely what South Australia has made its name on. And, uh, and out of, people expect that, you know, that big sort of muscular, robust style that really, it comes from, you know, we get high temperatures in the summer. Uh, we get, we've got these wonderful old vines that have, you know, produce, uh, you know, obviously small amounts of berry that have huge concentration. So the wine we're going to look at now is the 2012 Nashwalk Shiraz. Now, uh, Nashwalk is named after a, a, a ship that uh, crashed and sunk in McLaren Vale, on the, in the Bay of McLaren Vale, um, back, in, uh, back in the 1800s. Uh, and, and this particular wine, uh, look, I, out of McLaren Vale, if you looked at McLaren Vale and the Barossa, out of McLaren Vale, you tend to get more of those sort of chocolate mocha type notes. You've got lovely silky tannins and, and beautiful richness to it. So, cheers. Cheers.
You know, I definitely get the cocoa, that mocha that you mentioned. Uh, I'm also getting on the finish uh, a nice ketchup note. You know, like, not that Hunt stuff, but I mean the, the good stuff, Heinz ketchup. But it, it's coming through very, very nicely for me. This is a wonderful one. Ketchup. The Heinz, yeah, particularly. Yeah. Listen, I want to thank Rob Gilliland for being so, so generous with his time and with his wine. And we'll see you next time on Worldwide Wide-Eyed. <laughs>